Mrs. Lim Hui Hua, Minister in Prime Minister's Office and Second Minister for Finance and Transport. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. On behalf of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Singapore, I'm indeed very proud and very delighted to extend a warm welcome to all of you to the inaugural Singapore Accountancy Convention 2010. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our eminent guest of honor, Mrs. Lim, who has kindly taken time off her busy schedule to grace this event today. We also have amongst us our foreign guests from the International Federation of Accountants, the International Accounting Education Standards Board, the International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants, and the Small and Medium Practices Committee of IFAC. Amongst the international guests, we also have reps from the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, ACCA, CPA Australia, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, the Malaysian Institute of Accountants, and even the World Bank, who have traveled to Singapore, respectively from few other countries like Iceland, Mexico, South Africa, Japan, England, Scotland, and so forth. A very big thank you for showing your support here at the convention. I would also like to thank our participants for the overwhelming response to this inaugural Singapore Accountancy Convention and tonight's dinner, our convention Scala dinner. Our convention, with an initial capacity of about 600 seats, was actually sold out a month earlier. Because of the increased demand, we had to then increase the capacity we negotiated with MBS, then we get another 120 seats. And again, they were all filled up two weeks ago. Same with our gala dinner, which more than 500 guests will attend this evening, is also fully sold out. So we know we have more than 1,200 participants who are attending the Singapore Accountancy Convention and the Singapore Accountancy Gala Dinner. Transformation of Singapore and the accountancy profession. The recent financial crisis virtually wiped out a number of economies and more visibly millions of jobs. Singapore had displayed remarkable resilience and emerged from the global economic storm fairly well. With hot money flowing from the west to the east, Asia has entered the era of the golden ages. Global growth will now be centered on emerging markets, particularly in Asian countries with strong economic fundamentals. According to IMF's forecasted GDP growth for the next five years from 2011 to 2015, Four of the top 10 fastest growing G20 countries are Asian. They are China, India, Indonesia, and South Korea. Understandably, neither the United States nor any European country made it to the top 10, as these countries have a rather matured economy. Advanced economies are experiencing much slower growth compared to the developing world, due to the rapid rise of emerging economies, including China and India. The declining trend of advanced economies has been accelerated by the global financial crisis in 2008-2009. In fact, by 2020, 10 years from now, there will be changes in the global balance of economic power. China, which is the second largest economic today, is projected to overtake the U.S. to become the world's largest economy by around 2020, if they can maintain their economic growth all the way. 
These statistics point to one direction. That is, there's a window of opportunity for Singapore to create a strong presence in Asia over the next decade. For this to happen, Singapore has to remain relevant in the new world order as well as stay ahead of competition as new players gain competitive strength.